Всем привет, меня зовут Сергей Бобров. Hi everyone, my name is Sergey Bobrov, and I analyze vulnerabilities of mobile apps in Kaspersky Lab. And today I'd like to talk to you about the HTTP request splitting or CRLF injection, which is a well-known vulnerability. In the way we managed to exploit this vulnerability within the framework of the bug bounty program. In other words, it's a fresh view of an old vulnerability and a, an attempt to exploit the HTTP smuggling uh, vulnerability, but rather uh, uh, without deep diving into the web server uh, behavior. Uh, uh, what do we mean by HTTP request splitting vulnerabilities and how come they are still relevant in 2023? HTTP splitting is basically an ability to use uh, uh, CRLF uh, uh, characters in HTTP one protocol. Since it's a, it's a text protocol, the CRLF uh, characters uh, damage its structure that might lead in to potential problems. And uh, why is it still relevant in 2023? Nginx, uh, which is primarily what I'm going to be talking about, is uh, a leading uh, web server technology in the market and almost every third uh, site across the world or every second site in Russia uses Nginx uh, as a front and server and uh things I'm going to be talking about is not uh, a problem of the Nginx, but rather it's a uh, misconfiguration of Nginx server, which means that these vulnerabilities uh, are going to be something that we will be coming across for the next decade, and uh, Nginx uh, patch, global patch, will not uh, be able to fix it. So uh, well, let's move on to the main uh, part of the uh, presentation. Uh, the uh, request, the user request, has to be processed uh, to identify the location. That means we need to decode the parameters, then uh, replace double flashes with uh, single flashes and normalize the pathway uh, uh, to uh, be able to move between the folders. Following that, it is uh, written in the URI and document URI. Uh, variables, and since they have been decoded, they can contain CRLF characters. Less known uh, way uh, to, uh, is to get uh, a uh, variable from the location uh, directory uh, with an ex exception uh, range. Unlike the uh, asterisk, uh, dot asterisk rule, uh, the uh, CRLF characters uh, can be uh, moved into the uh, variables in the configuration. And if they are used in the functions shown in the slide that uh, generate the HTTP request or response, that will uh, result in HTTP splitting. The classical example is the HTTP to uh, sending the user from the HTTP to the HTTP uh, page. And uh, we use uh, uh, URI uh, variable uh, in the return function uh, to make sure that the user stays uh, in the web page, and the attacker can use the CRLF characters to add another heading and uh, simplify exploitation of uh, another vulnerability by using this uh, way. Depending on the HTTP splitting location, the HTTP response or request when the request is sent between the service, the splitting can be divided into two types. This slide shows the first type when splitting happens uh, when a response is generated for the user. In uh, well, uh, this case uh, is uh, uh, well known, it's easily detected, and all you need to do is use an additional heading uh, and make sure that it's in the HTTP response. And the web service, uh, by default, use the HTTP2 protocol, 
which does not contain uh, these vulnerabilities it's, it, since it's a binary protocol. But nevertheless, uh, don't forget about this particular type. Uh, if a vulnerability is generated when the backend server generates a response, it, it is sent to the front-end server, and regardless of the uh, front-end protocol, uh, uh, the uh, altered response is processed, which can also be used for splitting. However, uh, in my presentation, I wanted to focus more on the second option. Uh, when the HTTP splitting happens, so when the uh, request uh, is sent from uh, front end to the back end server. Before we discuss the way to exploit uh, this vulnerability, let's talk about uh, the detection. Uh, well, uh, we can be certain that uh, for, uh, the front end would be the Nginx server. We have no idea uh, whether uh, what app is used in the back end and what web server is used for back end purposes. Therefore, detection techniques uh, cannot be based on unknown variables and values. We need to use something more standardized, unified, and predictable. For instance, uh, to identify such vulnerabilities, we could use uh, uh, HTTP. Uh, requests uh, parsing errors because it's a standard it's, it's some, something standard therefore we can generate a request that will be sent to the front end without errors but if uh, it is sent to back end uh, uh, it will be it will uh, result in a parsing error of the HTTP request depending on uh, the in, injection uh, in the request uh, well it, it will define uh, the detection and the exploitation uh, techniques. For instance, you can inject it into parameters, into the pathway or the header. The uh, first and the funniest way to detect such vulnerabilities boils down to using two characters, uh, the uh, space uh, character and uh, something else. In other words, we send the very same requests, uh, the, uh, the first one will trigger an error and the other will not. For instance, in Nginx, uh, if uh, you have uh, a space and H, Nginx uh, starts uh, deciphering the next line as if it were protocol. In that case, it's going to be valid, so it will generate the 400 bed request error. And uh, it's not a versatile uh, method because uh, it is uh, primarily designed for Nginx, and it does not take into account uh, the CRLF uh, character use. However, it highlights the uh, misconfiguration issues uh, because if uh, it triggers the 400 bed request error, that means that uh, the inje injection happened in the uh, starting line of the HTTP request. The uh, 400 bed request error is something that you uh, may come across uh, during the usual operation of the web app. Therefore, you need to uh, implement uh, as many uh, identification ways as possible uh, because uh, different backend servers uh, process uh, these requests in different ways. So the next uh, uh, thing uh, to use would be to use the correct syn synthesis, but uh, a, a, uh, an incorrect protocol that will trigger the 505 uh, error. And uh, in ordinary life, you rarely come across uh, the uh, uh, 505 error, and that means uh, that uh, there is a high probability that this is the vulnerability you came across. Another uh, option would be to use uh, in any HTTP request to host uh, uh, he headers or uh, char incorrect characters in the headers. And that will also trigger the 400 uh, bad request error. And this is true for both uh, path and header injections. Another uh, feature of this uh, vulnerability that I wanted to highlight is as follows. We often trigger in an error before backend had a chance to check uh, the uh, author, uh, uh, to, to do the authorization check. Therefore, we can trigger these errors in the stacked, stacked apps, which are not uh, available to the uh, uh, user.
for instance, in the admin space. What are the options for uh, of this vulnerability? Uh, since we can uh, control the uh, client and the request, we can uh, control the vulnerabilities uh, that uh, cannot be exploited in uh, the usual life, for instance, access through the HTTP headers or uh, uh, decoded path, uh, pathways and in chat in various chat boxes uh, we uh, get access uh, get asked how come Cisco uh, is good in burpee but uh, does not provide uh, simple access and you can also send several requests in the uh, front end uh, because of splitting and that results in vulnerabilities caused by desync in uh, data processing when back end and front end uh, wait for just one request and and you generate two. In addition to that, you can exploit uh, various server vulnerabilities that uh, would not be exploited in the HTTP header. For instance, uh, using a host header uh, for lock for g uh, that uh, would never reach uh, a uh, an insecure or compromised backend. However, uh, when you come across this vulnerability in a real app, you usually see that it depends on yet another vulnerability that uh, might not be uh, intrinsic in the app. So uh, let's move on to the real cases uh, of exploiting this vulnerability. Case one uh, 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 is true for the male mail dot yandex dot ru and depending on the user requests the front end would uh, send uh, the request to the relevant back end and uh, the app uh, contained uh, ultimately a uh, lots of uh, proxy pa pass uh, proxy passes that uh, resulted in splitting uh, vulnerability. If the user used the light OP engine, so we generate the proxy pass using the URI uh, variable, and that uh, that allowed them uh, uh, to use exploit the HTTP splitting vulnerability. A typical uh, what can an attacker control in an HTTP request? Since it was a pass uh, injection, uh, we could uh, add uh, uh, arbitrary uh, headers, and this is the essence of the vulnerability. And since uh, it was uh, an injection in a, in a uh, path, we, we uh, avoid the front end normalizing the line, but uh, after the decoding, uh, the back end would receive uh, a value that could be processed in a normal way. In other words, we can uh, track the path uh, for uh, you know, processing the request, and uh, we are not limited by the light OP. Let's now look at uh, the uh, attack against a, a uh, client. Uh, we can uh, send a POST request, uh, w which would be similar to C CSRF, uh, and uh, if a request looks like that, that means that we can control the end, uh, uh, sorry, the beginning of the request, uh, the POST request, and the session cookies would be somewhere in between. And the logical uh, option would be to try and and uh, drive out the cookie values uh, that are in the middle into the post parameters and then try to get them out of the application. And uh, if you uh, drive them to the post uh, variable, the uh, request uh, will become unauthorized because the uh, cookie header is no longer there. So 
uh, it's not about uh, so, so to get the cookies uh, the attacker has to uh, inject uh, his session into the request so that uh, the data is uh, uh, stolen and uh, that uh, has its own pros and cons in a nutshell uh, if you use your own session in a request in other words you add uh, your own cookie header you uh, avoid uh, the problem of exploding the vulnerability only uh, if uh, certain circumstances come true, for instance, uh, a non-standard configuration in the user settings, or you can exploit the vulnerability in a component that has not been set by the user or the user has no access to it. In other words, we can uh, get ready uh, uh, for, uh, for everything in the attacker session and then send it to the user session. An additional uh, advantage is that you don't have any uh, problems with the CRF uh, tokens because uh, it will uh, it will be part of the attacker session. But there are also uh, cons uh, because these are the same side cookies, and you won't be able to attack from the attacker side uh, because uh, cookies will not be sent. In other words. Theoretically, you you will be able to get the fragments of the user request in this vulnerability, but they will not contain cookies, and it would make any sense. Uh, well, uh, in case of Yandex, it was not a problem because uh, the session cookie uh, uh, had the value of same site none, uh, so it would be an XSS uh, script scripting. So uh, the uh, main idea was to find the location to uh, transfer. Uh, the uh, user uh, cookies and the uh, ideal location was the signature because uh, signature to the email because it uh, it has no limits on the range of allowed characters has no limits on the maximum length of value and supports multi-line values and the exploitation is going to look like this you rewrite the path uh, to uh, be able to go to the endpoint which is responsible for saving the settings, then uh, you uh, write your own attacker session, uh, you set uh, the uh, length of the uh, uh, request, and uh, you have to keep in mind that the user request uh, is unknown. Therefore, uh, the length uh, should be sufficient for the back-end server not to get to trigger an error when uh, it reads uh, the uh, HTTP request uh, body. Otherwise, it will block uh, the request and it will never reach the back-end. So in the post uh, variable, you have to use padding or, or uh, use the same length as specified in the uh, header. Uh, then you use the C CSRF token, uh, which is part of the attacker session, and the rest of the HTTP request uh, is the variable that is the signature to the email. In the HTML, uh, it looks like this. The entire payload is going to be the path uh, that, that is part of the uh, request, and uh, then we use padding in the post parameter. Uh, it uh, should work ideally, and if the request is uh, not that large, uh, However, the problem is uh, uh, when uh, when we reach the cookies, the uh, signature value only included the highlighted uh, part of the code. It turns out that uh, semicolon uh, in all system uh, actually splits the variables, and this blocked the exploitation because the data never reached the uh, session cookies. Uh, and uh, was uh, ruptured at this uh, point. However, we use HTTP that uh, offers various uh, ways uh, to code the response uh, body, and you can uh, use the multi-port request. The multi-port request uh, is more bulky as far as stru its structure is concerned, and multi-port parameters uh, are split uh, by the values uh, uh, specified the molder. Well, uh, even in this case, it turns out that uh, the value uh, 
or split even earlier because front end when it sends uh, data to the front end uh, used the URI header that included the uh, payload used in the HTTP splitting in its original form and the back end server despite the fact that uh, it uh, did not meet the specs identified detected in the uh, 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 detected the boundaries uh, in the original version and uh, split uh, the uh, header and that, that's why uh, it was unable to get the header that stored the uh, user cookies. We bypassed that quite uh, easily because uh, we uh, used the uh, cookies in the coded uh, session uh, and after the HTTP splitting uh, it was not detected as uh, a uh, variable split splitter. Only after we rectified all these details we generated the uh, request that would save the part of the request in the attacker session. It looked like this. The attacker would just uh, go into his email settings and get uh, the uh, client uh, session ID, uh, not just headers that are added by uh, the web browser, but also additional headers that uh, were used by the front end before sending the request to the back end. And that opens up an additional exploitation options. Uh, you can uh, get a good look at the XSS uh, scripting and uh, uh, see what headers are used by the backend, and uh, that uh, allows you to attack vulnerable apps. Another case is also uh, about Yandex, uh, and uh, it's not a surprise because Yandex contributed a lot to. Uh, Defending against such vulnerabilities, so they have the Gigs uh, app that uh, scans a uh, web server configuration uh, to detect vulnerabilities like that. The vulnerability uh, was uh, detected in the direct.yandex.ru uh, website, and the configuration is more complicated. The path was rewritten uh, in the rewrite function, and uh, it used the URI uh, variable, and only then would it be sent to the backend server. The exploitation was more difficult because the attacker did not control the path and uh, would only uh, uh, get parameters uh, of the request, of the HTTP request. The CMD parameter uh, was not controlled, and it actually uh, uh, controlled the action uh, for processing the request. And uh, we, we, we tried to add another CMD parameter uh, with the help of the HTTP parameter pollution, but uh, uh, the, uh, as a result, uh, uh, we still use the CMD, the initial CMD parameter. After the rewrite, the outcome was the post uh, variable parameter. And despite the fact that the attacker did not control the path, uh, it still managed to activate uh, functions in the app, uh, arbitrary uh, functions in uh, the app, because the MLPL uh, uh, was acted in a similar way, a way as uh, various other functions in the contemporary frameworks. Similar to the previous vulnerability, I tried to identify a location that could be uh, used for uh, saving the user uh, uh, request, but Yandex Direct uh, is not as simple as it might, may seem. Uh, however, uh, we can now deep dive into the open source uh, code of this app uh, because of the recent, recent leak. And uh, it doesn't really matter what the activated function results in because uh, everything happens in the attacker session and this session can actually uh, block the account. I used uh, the unblock cam uh, function and uh, this uh, fa function used the uh, uh, 
here back, uh, which is familiar to Yandex Experts. So they use this parameter in almost any service, and it uh, would send the user to the open redirect. So uh, if we use the HTTP splitting, we can uh, trigger the open redirect app. There was a protection uh, tool against the links, but uh, you could use the uh, backslash character uh, that would uh, act as an absolute uh, link without specifying the protocol. So uh, if you combine uh, various out-of-scope vulnerabilities, uh, uh, which are never part of bug, bug bounty programs, so we get a very interesting way to get user cookies, from uh, including the HTTP-only cookies, uh, that uh, we would not have been able to uh, get uh, otherwise. Given the previous uh, vulnerability problems, we can uh, use the multi-port. We can generate the multi-port request and uh, uh, use the uh, the uh, rep path uh, parameter uh, that contains user uh, data. In this particular case, we might have run into problems because uh, it supports the CRLF, CRLF uh, character, and it could result in an error in the header. However, in uh, many uh, web languages, there is a special protection against HTTP splitting in the response, and uh, all the control characters are replaced with uh, spaces. So we used the uh, splitting uh, protection in the response. Uh, and it looked like this. Uh, the user would get a payload uh, with the HTTP splitting and open redirect. Uh, and uh, when the uh, request was sent to the backend, the HTTP splitting would be activated. It triggered open redirect, and the, the user would get the 302 redirect that contained the attacker website and the remainder of the uh, HTTP request as a link. In real code, it looked like this, and everything that you can see on this slide was part of uh, a link, in other words, parameters that were uh, sent to the attacker site uh, with a link. And the uh, cookie uh, might contain uh, this character, and uh, that means that, that during the direct part of the request would not be sent to the attacker side, but would remain in the location hash. Therefore, uh, you have to get this data from the user browser. The next uh, case I want to share with you is uh, using uh, the Amazon S3 storage uh, for uh, as a storage for the uh, static data from front end server. If uh, it's misconfigured, it might result in a very interesting vulnerability that was uh, described by Franz Rosen in the Detectify article. And the idea is as follows. When Amazon uh, uses the request to, uh, did, to identify the bucket, uh, it uh, primarily uses the HTTP uh, host header that specifies uh, either the uh, full endpoint or endpoint with the bucket specification. If it specifies uh, the general uh, endpoint, then bucket uh, uh, identification is, uh, is received from the uh, path. So you can rewrite the host value, and the request uh, will uh, not go to the bucket, uh, but rather would be redirected uh, to the uh, bucket attacker. And since any attacker can create uh, his own bucket on Amazon, we can upload the publicly available open uh, file and uh, go to it uh, through a compromised site. And it's a false positive uh, of HTTP splitting. It's a good example of false positive. But cookie users uh, just uh, uh, cookie user cookies are put into the uh, request body and. Uh, it's never used. This will 
vulnerability can be uh, improved uh, and uh, reused. The initial idea uh, was as follows. Since uh, we're not just we're not just controlling the user request, uh, but uh, actually act as a backend uh, in uh, Amazon S3 settings. So the initial idea was to uh, use the uh, logging procedure. However, Amazon does not uh, allow for logging custom headers uh, in the request uh, body. Therefore, I. I tried to use the uh, file storage function uh, in Amazon to, to be able uh, to load into my bucket a setting that would allow any unauthorized user to create uh, his own files with the help of the sub-requests. And by using uh, the existing access, we can uh, reuse the HTTP splitting uh, to generate uh, a sub-request and save a file with uh, part of the user request in the bucket. And this is the uh, way it looked. We got rid of all the co uh, cons uh, of uh, HTTP splitting because uh, a response is generated by the GET request. And uh, by using the existing access, we can generate uh, any uh, request, including the put request from the very same site. And uh, all it needs, uh, uh, the all the attacker needs is uh, get uh, the uh, user path through the bucket. And of course, this is true not just for the storage facilities such as Amazon S3, but uh, other S3 compatible uh, things like uh, Wiki Cloud Storage and Yandex Object Storage. The only difference I uh, identified uh, was as follows. I was unable to set the bucket in uh, uh, in the VK cloud storage so that it would allow unauthorized users to save files there but it doesn't interfere with exploitation because uh, the attacker can create SSK for his bucket uh, 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 add the AV, uh, authorization AVS uh, header and the current date header and uh, the uh, request for saving the file would be authorized and it can be used for the attack purposes. The next case is also about Yandex. It was uh, identified, detected in the Yandex Messenger for uh, the Yandex team members, and it's a great example that we can exploit a vulnerability even in the apps which are not available uh, to attackers. The problem was as follows. The proxy pass uh, uh, link used the URI uh, variable. And the vulnerability was very similar to the previous three. The request would be redirected uh, to uh, yandex.ru slash uh, chat. And the issue was that any attempt to exploit the vulnerability that uh, uh, was linked with the rewriting the host uh, uh, resulted in the uh, 302 uh, redirect error. I uh, missed uh, uh, the custom uh, headers uh, used by the front end, for instance, uh, X uh, Yandex uh, slash HTTPS. And uh, uh, the back end uh, saw uh, uh, which, uh, whether it was HTTPS or HTTP. The backend did not find the header and simply redirected the request to the HTTPS link without processing the request itself. Uh, as soon as uh, the request uh, was configured in the right way, and by the way, this is uh, the major problem for the black box exploitation, because uh, you can hardly guess this header, but it will prohibit uh, the vulnerability to be exploited because the backend will not process your requests. After we substituted the header, 
I received a very interesting message uh, in the comments section saying that, well, uh, as soon as you uh, get rid uh, of part of the request for rewriting the host uh, header, you also get rid of the XRL IP header and XOriginal IP and so on and so forth. And that means that the backend cannot identify, uh, identify the user IP uh, by using the headers, so it would use the front-end IP for these purposes. And as a result, I saw the uh, comment with uh, metadata on a specific build, and it used the uh, host header without any encryption. And uh, after uh, the request was generated, I managed uh, to use XSS uh, through the host uh, to exploit this vulnerability. And the last case I want to share with you uh, was identified during the uh, VK bug bounty uh, program, which is uh, called the VK Championship. And this vulnerability was detected uh, in a website uh, that didn't have any logic that could be uh, re-exploited. In other words, it was just a file repository so that uh, users would uh, get PDF files. During uh, an attempt to exploit this vulnerability, I saw that uh, the, uh, the HTTP pipelining was uh, supported. In other words, you can uh, configure several requests that would be uh, sent simultaneously, and backend would respond with several HTTP responses, while the front end only expected one response. And uh, then magic happened that allowed me to exploit this vulnerability. The uh, exploitation was as follows. The very first request, and it doesn't uh, was configured. Uh, uh, I did not care about uh, the, the response, but uh, then I uh, rewrote the host uh, in the second request to trigger the redirect to the main host by using the link uh, that I replaced uh, in uh, the past. Uh, this is the way it looked. And the second HTTP response uh, uh, did not link to the first one always, and you had to uh, re uh, repeat the exploitation several times until uh, the HTTP, uh, the second HTTP request would link uh, to. Uh, the body of the first response, and uh, it's a classical XSS uh, caused by an unusual technique. I have no idea why that happened, but it did. And, uh, well, uh, this is the way uh, the exploitation itself looked like. Well, uh, and an obvious uh, piece of advice would be as follows. If you use URI uh, variables and document URI to configure HTTP requests or responses, uh, replace them with a request URI that contain non-normalized values. And uh, if you uh, need to get values uh, from the link with a regular expression, uh, all you need to do is uh, add space uh, characters uh, and uh, the regular expression will not uh, contain uh, XRLF characters and the variable will not uh, have these characters either. And this configuration is not going to be vulnerable. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Sergey, thank you so much for your presentation. If I got it right, uh, in one of your slides, uh, when, you give, uh, when you provide us with a case study on uh, Yandex, uh, uh, where did you get the Nginx values? Was it after the disclosure or at the beginning of the research? Uh, uh, now, uh, I got this data from the leaks. Uh, it, it might seem unethical to you, but, uh, you know, uh, to improve the uh, security of the service that I personally use uh, was worth it. You know, I, uh, I used the uh, data leaks uh, to get the initial uh, code used by Yandex. Thank you.
Sergey, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, well, my question is about case five uh, and the VK uh, Cup. Uh, you're not clear uh, about why that happens. Uh, well, uh, it does not always uh, result in two responses. Uh, don't you think it's uh, the burp uh, problem? Uh, didn't the web browser uh, re reproduce it? Uh, no, it was done in the usual browser without any uh, uh, a proximity pass. I thought it was a burp uh, uh, problem. All right. Uh, actually, I'm uh, I'm not clear on why it happened myself because it took me about five uh, uh, five times to refresh the page. And like I said, uh, the main idea was for the second response uh, to uh, link with the body of the uh, first response and uh, the uh, length of the first response uh, increased by the length of the second response. I, uh, well, uh, I fixed this bug uh, b through the options or the headers, you know, so for, for, the for the request to be smaller so that it would uh, link, uh, th so that the responses would link with each other more frequently. Thank you. In that case, thank you so much for your attention.